We are live. Welcome to Bob Wren Stadium for game two of our doubleheader today between the Ohio Bobcats and the Northern Illinois Huskies. Alongside Quinn Elfers, my name is Sam Hyman. Kylie Osco is our field reporter. Quinn, we're ready for some baseball. The second game of the doubleheader, if the first game was anything like the second game will be, it's going to be a fun day. Yeah, nothing like a lot of comebacks, a close game, the one to extra innings, the momentum and probably the intensity is still kind of wreathing within the players. I wonder how Ohio's going, or Ohio and Illinois are both going to react and attack this next game. Yeah, it should be interesting. We'll get a first glimpse of Dylan Masters, who makes his first start of the season. The junior from New Albany, Ohio, a 5-6-3 ERA and three appearances and Quinn, this is a guy that, you know, can come out of the bullpen, but he also can be a starter, so that's good to have for Ohio. Yeah, it's just about seeing guys who can get out there and eat up innings, and Coach Moore is definitely, is definitely impressed of what he's seen with Masters, and it is showing that with giving him his first start of the season. The Murray State transfer gets set to go here against this NIU offense. We'll get you the full defensive alignment for the Bobcats in just a moment, but... Ohio trying to bounce back. The Bobcats suffered an 8-6 loss earlier today. Give a ton of credit to NIU, who found a way in 11 innings. The Huskies prevailed to win that game. And the first pitch is right down the middle for a called strike. And our first pitch time, 3-11 Eastern. Master is quickly back to work, and the second pitch is fouled off to the left side. Eric Arado is at the plate, left fielder, who was impossible to get out in game one. He reached base six, uh, yeah, he reached base six times Wow. last game. Uh, five times, I should say, but still very impressive. Yeah, Arado's been a consistent starter for the Huskies, starting all 13 games with a 320 average. This guy can get on base. Billy Adams, second baseman, commits an error. Tried to get a little bit too fancy there with the glove work. And there's a base runner for NIU. It's Eric Arado. Yeah, Coach Moore is telling us that errors have been something he's looked to somewhat uh, decrease in the Bobcat lineup. And seeing an error committed off the first batter, off the, off the second pitch, it's not what you want to see. So actually, it's officially going to go down as an infield single because Billy Adams, tough play. Tough play for of, Billy. Of course. So... Charging in there on a slow roller. It will go down as an infield single for Eric Garado, who now has reached base six times today, five times in game one. Here's Andre Demetral, the shortstop at the plate. Ground ball right to third. Nick Dolan making the start. And the second baseman, Billy Adams, throws that one past the first baseman, Wes Lug. So just one out there on the double play attempts. Arado is out 5-4, and Demetral reaches on a fielder's choice. Yeah, great awareness from Nick Dolan making the quick throw to second base to get at least one runner out there, Arado, who's been rather quick this season. So great to at least get him in the dugout. Yeah, no doubt about it. Certainly important to keep these runners off the base paths. NIU scored first in game one as Colin Summerhill takes outside for a ball. 1-0. Summerhill, the designated hitter in game two. He caught in game one. Didn't record a hit in game one. But he did reach base a bunch of times. Several walks and a sacrifice fly RBI. This is one of the best hitters for the Huskies. Yeah, this guy can hit for power and contact, leading the team in average with a 347 average, but also dominating when it comes to hitting home runs. He has seven already on the season in just 13 games. This guy is a danger anytime he steps up to the plate. One ball and two strikes, the count to Colin Summerhill, the senior from Chicago. We asked Coach Copeland of NIU, what stands out with Colin at the plate? And Coach Copeland said he is always on time. It is very hard to get a fastball by Colin. He understands the strike zone very well. And there's a reason why he's hitting 347 to your point, Quinn, and is tied for third nationally with seven home runs coming into today. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. 
One, two is poked foul right side. Count remains one ball and two strikes. You've got to think for the Bobcats after the first game to lose the way that they lost eight to six in a grinder of a, an 11 inning matchup. Mentally, you just have to find a way to flush that down the drain and hit the reset button. Yeah, it's just you can't let that emotion get to you. You got to make sure you're batting down the hatches and not let sneaky base runners get on here and there because that's what cost them last game. Those two base runners that got on with walks and a few singles down down the stretch count is what costed them and let them let up two runs in the 11th inning. Two balls and two strikes to the number three hitter, Colin Summerhill. Looking for his first hit in this series. Masters fires home and it's just low. Three balls and two strikes. Last year, Dylan Masters did start four games in 16 appearances, and there's a nasty off speed that darts in on the hands, and Summerhill is retired for out number two. You gotta feel good getting that first, getting that first guy, getting a guy like Summerhill in the dugout with a oh, yeah. nice strikeout off that nice off speed. Yeah, Summerhill's really good at hitting the fastball, so when you throw a couple of wrenches in there and change the speed, it definitely can get him off balance as this pitch misses outside to Mason Kelly, the first baseman. Yeah, Mason Kelly and Summerhill have been a dynamic duo, recording 35 RBIs in just 13 games from just the two of them alone. Definitely, you got to love that if you're Northern Illinois having that 3-4 hitting spot locked down. Those are the two guys you definitely want in the 3-4 spot, no doubt, Quinn. And Mason Kelly came up clutch last game. Late in the ninth inning, Mason Kelly hit a solo home run to break the 4-4 tie. That wasn't the difference because Ohio responded in the bottom of the ninth, but it definitely was a huge boost. Long run, Paulie Mancino, and he makes the catch to retire the side. So Dylan Masters works the scoreless top of the first inning. We head to the bottom half as the Bobcats bat for the first time in game two today. No score. Ohio and Northern Illinois from Bob Wren Stadium. We'll be back. Here we go, bottom of the first inning, back with Quinn Elfers and our field reporter, Kylie Osco. My name is Sam Hyman. Thanks for being here. Uh, Bob Wren Stadium for game two of our doubleheader today. Cole Williams leads things off for the Bobcats. The Marshall transfer designated hitter and faces a southpaw junior from the state of Wisconsin, Tommy Meyer. First pitch is a strike on the outside corner. Count is nothing and one. Tommy Meyer, 
He's a guy that's pitching some pretty big games so far for the Huskies, at, pitching at LSU and at Cincinnati earlier on in the season. So he yeah. definitely knows how to, <laughs> how to play in big time uh, circumstances. Tough competition. Yes. Tough competition. That's been a huge part of this growth process for NIU having to face some of these really good opponents to get prepared for MAC play. Cole Williams grounds out to second. Let's get you the defense quickly for NIU. Left to right in the outfield, Eric Arado, Charlie Parcell, J.P. Gauthier makes his second start of the season. Aaron Harper at third, Andre Demafield at, at short, Jake Nelson at second, Mason Kelly at first, Cooper Cohn behind the plate. And here's J.R. Nelson, the shortstop for Ohio. First pitch misses high, one ball and no strikes. A little bit more on Tommy Meyer. He hasn't started a lot of games in his career. Popped up down the right field line. Really tough angle here. Mason Kelly over the shoulder catch, Quinn. Wow, what a play. Mason Kelly keeping his head on a swivel to kind of get under that ball and reach that glove out just beyond his shoulder to make the outstanding grab. So two up, two down for Tommy Meyer, who again doesn't start at least from a historical standpoint in his career. The junior only six of his 29 appearances on the mound in his first two years were starts. So this is his fourth start this season. He's nearly started more games this season than he has in his first two seasons. So primary bullpen guy. Gideon Antle at the plate for Ohio. 0-1 is smacked foul right side. Gideon Ansel came up big for the Bobcats last game in terms of, time, of terms of hitting a crucial home run down the stretch to give the Bobcats some life. Yeah, he hit a three-run home run in the middle portion of the game, and that was his sixth home run of the season. He is one of the best batting averages in the country hitting 533 coming into today which is sixth best and he's fooled on the off speed in the turf and a one two three inning for Tommy Meyer so cool calm and collected for Tommy Meyer three up three down we head to the top of the second inning after this no score Bobcats and Huskies from Bob Wren Stadium We are back with Quinn Elfers, Sam Hyman, Kylie Osco, our field reporter. Delighted to have you with us. The, sun, the sun's starting to come out, Quinn. Yeah, after a bit of sprinkling <laughs> early on, which could have maybe hindered some of the players' performances, it's nice that the sun's out on this second game of the series. Ohio looking to bounce back after an 8-6 loss in 11 innings in game one. NIU 4-10, 1-0 in MAC play. As we start the top of the second inning, and this pitch is outside, ball one to Cooper Cohn, the catcher. One ball and one strike. Cooper Cohn having himself a quietly good season, batting a 3-3-3 average with two doubles. So, in only six games, three starts, so a lot to like out of 
a small sample size there. Yeah, Cooper was busy earlier today with a double, an infield single, and also reached base on a walk and an error. One, two, waved at and missed. Strike three, Dylan Masters has his second strikeout. Dylan Masters not letting that, the result of the first game get in his head, already striking out too early on in the contest. One down, top of the second inning, and J.P. Gauthier launches this one down the right field line. West Lug, the first baseman, patrols and makes the catch. Wow. Terrific over-the-shoulder snag from Wes Lug. We get some deja vu, an almost identical play last inning, or last half inning. Wow. Yeah, we saw that earlier, Just Quinn. You're very right. Very recently. Terrific stuff from both first baseman Wes Lug, Ohio, and Mason Kelly making over-the-shoulder catches. Here's Aaron Harper, the third baseman, and he takes a strike. On the outside corner, nothing and one. Two down, Ohio and Northern Illinois playing the second game of a doubleheader today. Dylan Masters fires this off speed down and in. And the count is one ball and one strike. Masters transferred from Murray State. This is looped in the air, shallow right field, and that'll plop in for a two-out single. Aaron Harper. Bobcats need to work on not letting guys get on base in this two outs. The 11th inning last game was a big detriment to how the, the Bobcats lost last game. They, let, two, they, let, two, they let, let a few guys get on base with two outs and seen a little bit of repetition here early in the second. Charlie Parcell, the freshman, takes a strike on the outside corner. Nothing and one. Parcell coming into today hitting 262. We mentioned earlier he got off to that hot start, 10 hits in the first six games, cooled off a bit with only one hit over his last six. But he had a pretty solid game one with a couple of hits and a sack bunt. And he's a true center fielder, only a freshman. Two balls and two strikes. A nice slider there to fool Parcel. He was able to get a piece and stay alive two and two. Yeah, keeping the count alive is gonna be important for both teams, just wearing down those arms getting guys out of the bullpen early. 2-2 two -two is crushed through the right side. Base hit for Parcell. And Aaron Harper is upstanding at third. Two out single, there we go again. NIU, they just don't go to sleep with two outs. Yeah, they do not, they do not tuck their tail between their legs when they're down in the count or down in the uh, out numbers, they just, have batting down the hatches, get those hits, get guys on base, and now they have a guy on third, guy on first with a deadly player coming up to bat. Yeah, here's Jake Nelson, second baseman for the Huskies. Nelson recorded three hits in game one and three RBIs. And the breaking ball settles right down the middle for strike one. So again, we mentioned earlier Dylan Masters this is his first start of the season. Three relief appearances this year. He hasn't thrown more than three innings. And the biggest sort of hiccup for Dylan on the mound in his first three outings, he has struggled to throw strikes. He has eight walks and seven strikeouts. So more walks, only one more walk, but still, that's it's really got him out of his rhythm so far this year. Yeah, Northern Illinois is a team already looking like they're gonna make Masters pay if they let guys on base, getting a great hit last, at, last time up. So we'll see if uh, Jake Nelson can continue that trend of 
striking late. Nelson, the senior from Altoona, Wisconsin. That one just misses outside. Two balls and a strike. Dylan Masters quickly retired the first two batters of this inning. And then back-to-back -back singles from the Huskies. They're threatening with runners at the corners. 2-1 is grounded slowly towards third. Nick Dolan charges in, fires to first in time. Big play from Nick Dolan, who didn't start game one, makes a solid throw, and that ends the top of the second inning. Scoreless game, Ohio and Northern Illinois heading to the bottom of the second inning next, right here from Bob Wren Stadium. All right, here we go. Bottom of the second inning from Bob Wren Stadium. Back with Quinn Elfers and Kylie Osco, our field reporter. Sam Hyman with you. A.J. Roush stands in for Ohio. Tommy Meyer at the plate and the first pitch, or at, on the mound, I should say, and the first pitch is upstairs. Ball one. A.J. Roush coming into today, hitting 316. <laughs> 2 0. And that's up and in on the corner for a strike, 2 and 1. Yeah, you say he's hitting 316. You forgot to mention he's also hitting four home runs so far. There we go. 10 RBIs. Like, this guy is another dead, like, another great power hitter for the Bobcats at 3 4. Yeah, tough out. Fly ball down the right field line. Gauthier gives a chase close to the bullpen. And that is out of play. Hard collision there with Gauthier and the wall. He's all right. Good effort there from J.P. Gauthier. Gauthier recently made, made his debut in the last game of the doubleheader. So he looking very confident out there with the Running and just close miss of that potential pop out. But J.R. Roush has another chance to make some damage. And A.J. takes a strike on the inside corner. That is the second strikeout of the game for Tommy Meyer. Tommy Meyer. We talked to Coach Copeland about Tommy. And Coach said, Tommy probably has the best stuff on our team. Maybe the conference and Ty praise his mix of pitches as Pauly Mancino swings and misses for strike one. Tommy Meyer is consistently 90 to 92 miles an hour from the left side with that fastball, which is pretty tough, and then has a big breaking ball. So his mixture of pitches certainly catches Coach Copeland's eye. Already being put to good use with two straight strikeouts, one ending the first, one ending the uh, first, and one to begin the second. Yeah, the way Coach Copeland described Tommy, his stuff is real, and he meant it with a ton of confidence. You could hear it in his voice. O2, and there's the big hook. We talked about the fastball at 90 to 92. His breaking ball has massive turn on it, and that's his third strikeout. Wow. 
striking out Pauly Mancino, who came up huge last game for the Bobcats. Yeah. Pauly Mancino was a, a double shy of the cycle. He had a triple, a homer, a single. Alex Finney is hit by the pitch. So that's the first base runner for the Bobcats in this game. Wow, well, after two straight strikeouts, kind of shocking to see Tommy Meyer nip Finney on the first pitch. Nick Dolan at the plate for the Bobcats. Didn't start in game one. This is only his third start of the season and he takes up and away. One ball and no strikes. Nick Dolan in some healthy competition over at third base with Taylor Gill, who's been the primary starter over there at the hot corner. One and one. Yeah, Nick Dolan has tons of experience for the Bobcats. He started every game last year he played in, and 26 of 36 in 2022. So he's been a consistent just presence in that Bobcat locker room. Yeah, no doubt. 226 average last year. He did have 14 doubles. So this is a big opportunity for him. Only third start of the year to try and make a statement. Another nasty curveball from Tommy Meyer. Strike two. You can see that movement from up here. Just yeah. Like yeah. It's like a boomerang. Yeah, it just went up and then straight down. One, two. Goes with a fastball and Dolan shaves it off. You know, Tommy Meyer had a really intriguing summer last year. Summer 2023, he pitched in the Northwoods League for the Madison Mallards. Northwoods League, a summer collegiate wooden bat league, one, two. And Dolan went around, strike three. Tommy Meyer was an all-star for the, the Madison Mallards in the Northwoods League. So, I can see why. Yeah, and he's looking really good with four strikeouts in two innings. No score. Top of the third is next right here from Bob Wren Stadium. Top of the order for Northern Illinois as we welcome you back to Bob Wren Stadium alongside Quinn Elfords and Kylie Osco, our field reporter. Sam Hyman with you. Eric Arado flips this one foul left side. Lands on the concourse. Arado not afraid to swing after he notched a single in his first at bat up at this game. Infield single for Eric. Continues his busy day. Game one, he had three walks and two singles. Quickly nothing in two is Dylan Masters. We notice from, from Dylan, when he starts throwing strikes consistently, he doesn't waste any time. In between pitches, it's 
one after another after another. Yeah, probably potentially throw in Northern Illinois off their game with these quick pitches. Masters, that's just how he rolls. One, two is whacked, foul left side. Eric Arado is one of the most disciplined batters in the Mid-American Conference. But he swings and misses. Strike three, Dylan Masters has his third strikeout. Yeah, you were saying very disciplined guy with only eight strikeouts. That's only his eighth strikeout of the season, which he's one of the few who, one of the few Huskies who've gotten considerable playing time to be under 10. Andre Demetral at the plate. The shortstop takes outside, ball one. Demetral, the senior from Rochester, Minnesota, last year was first on the team in triples and Second on the team with 37 walks right behind Eric Arado. 1-1 one -one pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Seems like Masters is finding some sort of a groove right now. Yes, indeed. Right back to work. And that's just low. Two balls and two strikes. Andre Demetral, the senior shortstop at the plate, awaits the 2-2 two -two low. Demetral's father, Chris, played baseball at Western Michigan, also a Mac school. That's on the inside corner, strike three call. Demetral threw the bat and was on his way to first, thinking that was a free pass. Not so fast. Another strikeout, four for Dylan Masters through two and two thirds. Both pitchers have been electric when it comes to getting strikeouts. Combined, the last five at bats have been nothing but strikeouts for both Ohio and Northern Illinois. Dylan Masters has adjusted nicely in his first start of the season after three relief appearances. One pitch, one out to Colin Summerhill, who has been quiet here today. We go. All right, welcome back to Bob Wren Stadium as we start the bottom of the third inning. 8-9-1, due up for Ohio. Wes Lug, the first baseman, takes a strike. Wes Lug making just his sixth start of the season. Tommy Meyer back on the mound for NIU. And the 0-1 is grounded foul. While we have a moment... Our field reporter, Kylie, back up here with us. Kylie, what do you have for us? So I had the privilege to talk to some of the Ohio parents. And honestly, we have a very supportive and determined parental uh, fan base. I would say 90% of all of the parents I spoke to come to every single game wow. with them missing very little games, which is honestly astounding um, when it comes to the fact that I talked to four parents and only one parent is from in-state. And the other ones are three plus hours away, which is crazy to me. But that is just so nice to see that we have that continual support for our team. Yeah, making the drive and making it on a consistent basis as the one-two is up and in. Two balls and two strikes. One of those parents you spoke to, J.R. Nelson. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, honestly, a very sweet lady. She comes to every single game. She hasn't missed one since he started playing here at Ohio. Um, his grandparents are also from Wisconsin, and they come every opportunity. Um, her mom is proud of her son and how he performs. And I quote, I love watching him do what he loves, and he loves playing the game. It's what he wants to do in life. And honestly, that's beautiful. To me. Yeah. And to think that as the 2-2 is called strike three, another beautiful breaking ball from Tommy Meyer, you know, to think that, J.R. Nelson is only a freshman, and, yeah. and, and for his mom to say that is 
is outstanding. And Coach Moore talked about how Jr. has earned the opportunity to start as a freshman. Mm -hmm. You know, that is that's really high praise and really awesome that that mom had that to say. One ball and no strikes to Billy Adams, the second baseman. Tommy Meyer delivers outside. Two balls and no strikes. And then I believe you also spoke to A.J. Roush. Yes. And, and, and uh, A.J.'s parents, mom or dad, perhaps. Yes. So A.J. is one of those parents, or uh, uh, one of those students who lives in-state. His parents are from Columbus. Um, so they have the opportunity to just be a little bit closer to coming to games. But um, I just took the time to ask him, what was your favorite memory of watching your son play for Ohio? And he said when they beat Kent State for the first year. And that was just something that stood out. Uh, he was just really proud of his son and the team and how they rallied together to do something like that. Billy Adams crushes this in the left center field. Charlie Parcell makes the catch, and there are two down. Yeah, beating Kent State is not easy. Kent State's actually the favorites to win the league this year, so we'll be uh, all eyes on that series when it arrives. Kylie, thank you for, for joining us. Thank you so much, guys. All right, back to the top of the order. Cole Williams, the designated hitter, stands in. When you think about it and what Kylie was saying with all the, the parents that are not just in-state but out-of-state and making the trip, we see some Northern Illinois fans here as well, dedicated parents here. For sure, the parents are definitely what make the home games feel more like a home game to the players, and it's nice for some of the Northern Illinois parents to be out too. Tommy Meyer is absolutely dialed in. Three up, three down once again. He's got five strikeouts through three innings. And Northern Illinois and Ohio remain scoreless heading to the top of the fourth inning right after this. Welcome back to Bob Wren Stadium with Quinn Elfers, Sam Hyman, Kylie Osco, our field reporter. Thanks for being with us throughout the course of the day. Long day with a doubleheader. Game one went 11 innings. Here's a beautiful curveball from Dylan Masters that hits right down Court Street, strike one. Mason Kelly at the plate, senior from Mount Washington, Kentucky. That ground ball is fair. Dolan bobbles it. Throws to first, but late. And we've got a pace runner. It's Mason Kelly. Mason Kelly finding that foul line along third base and just painting it with a, with a tiny little pencil there, it looked like. Yeah, just a small, maybe a lead pencil. Just <laughs> very thin margin for fair or foul from Mason Kelly's ground ball. It's going to go down as an infield single. That was a tough play for Nick Dolan. That was great of Dolan to find the ball, even though a little bit of chaos might have ensued there, and get the throw in, even if it was just a bit short. Here's Cooper Cohn at the plate for the Huskies. He was the DH in game one. He's catching in game two. That misses low. One ball and one strike to Cooper, who's a freshman from McHenry, Illinois, 
out of McHenry High School. 1-1 one, one is golfed into shallow right center field. Gideon Antle makes the catch. One away. Both pitchers have settled into this game nicely. Yeah, neither pitcher seeming to give much of an inch besides that Masters uh, infield single. Just not much uh, action from either offense so far. Yeah, in fact, two of the th uh, two of the four Northern Illinois hits have been infield hits, and Ohio doesn't have a hit yet in the game. Fly ball into shallow left field. J.R. Nelson backpedals, and the freshman makes the play. Two down. We just heard Kylie talk about JR's mother who makes the trip from Illinois. And JR Nelson is from Vernon Hills, Illinois. Easier to do on the weekend. And if you get Friday off from work or just to travel in general. Yeah, it's very nice to see him out, and like especially as a freshman, a lot of change with college in general and just a probably change in habits and schedule. Just nice seeing a little bit of reminders from home every now and again. Yeah, JR as the count is now 2-0 to Aaron Harper. JR, he comes from a, an athletic family as this is spun on the ground into shallow right field. Mason Kelly charges into third base safely. It's a two out single. Not a lot of hard hit baseballs in this game. I tell you what, I feel like I'm saying the same thing over and over again. And then, uh, a bloop single kind of got out there and it made the runner go from third, first to third with two outs in the inning. Two outs. Top of the fourth inning. Northern Illinois has left three runners on base so far. Two more ducks on the pond. Charlie Parcell at the plate, the freshman. And pokes that foul. Masters unloads. And the slider misses down and away. One ball and one strike. Yeah, something interesting about uh, Parcell here, he's a, despite being a, a freshman, he's already cemented himself in that center field spot. Yes. Something you don't normally see in any of uh, the... You don't. And in any facet of uh, baseball. He actually, I'm glad you brought that up, Quinn, because he wasn't expected to be the starting center fielder going into the season. J.P. Gauthier, who is now the starting right fielder was dealing with some injuries in the preseason, and Gauthier transferred in from Illinois State and had to take a back seat because of the injury. Charlie gets his opportunity, takes advantage of it, and then when JP comes back, talk about being unselfish and willing to change positions in the outfield as Parcell bloops this one down the right field line and is just foul, I mean just foul, by a couple of feet. Yeah, it's really... They say football is a game of inches. I'd argue so is baseball. Centimeters. <laughs> Centimeters even. <laughs> it was close. Yeah, I think that was more like maybe five to ten inches from being fair. Yeah, that ump definitely had to think about that for a second. 2-2, two -two, fouled off. You just think if that ball would have just gone a few more inches left, the catastrophic outcome the Bobcats would have had to ensue. Yeah, with two outs, one run definitely would have scored. And Aaron Harper running on the pitch over at first. You never know. 2-2 two -two offering is down and away. 3-2. and two. Heck of an at-bat here. Dylan Masters, who walked eight batters in his first three appearances in eight innings, is in danger of his first walk. Doesn't happen. Strike three called. And that retires the side. So Dylan Masters... Has five strikeouts through four innings. We got a pitcher's duel on hand. Somebody.
Bottom of the fourth inning here from Bob Wren Stadium. The freshman shortstop, J.R. Nelson. 0 for 1 in this game. Batted ninth in game one and had one hit in five plate appearances. But who is going to solve the riddle? That is Tommy Meyer. Yeah. Quinn, he, he's been outstanding. I mean, five strikeouts in just three innings of play. That is impressive in any state. Outside and did not go around. Our umpiring crew today, Jay Myers, Andy Dudons, and Mark Lalo. One ball and one strike to J.R. Nelson, the freshman. Breaking ball, looped in the air, shallow center field, but hangs up enough for Charlie Parcell. One away. Looked like for a second it might have gotten down, but that ball had wings on it, it looked like. It just kept on floating, glided right into the glove of the center fielder. Tommy Meyer has not allowed a hit in three and a third innings. And this is a guy that came in with a ridiculously high ERA, 10-9-7 10, ERA in 10 and two-thirds innings, 15 walks, 14 strikeouts. He's got, he's got five strikeouts and zero walks in three and a third. Yeah, utilizing that breaking ball there to get a Gideon Antle swinging Ohio's best hitter up to date. Both pitchers have been utilizing outstanding breaking balls in their arsenal to get hit hitters swinging and looking at no, no doubt strikes. Now a bunt, this is a way to stop the bleeding. And the first hit of the game. So Tommy Myers' strong start of allowing zero hits through three and a third finally comes to an end. Gideon Antle, he pulls the string. He, he, we know he has the power, Quinn, but he also has the ability to drop down a drag bunt. Yeah, using that speed to quickly get to first base, Meyer didn't even bother throwing that ball. A.J. Roush takes outside ball one. So Ohio has its second base runner. Richard Jr., A.J. Roush, 0 for 1 in this game. Breaking ball, sails up and away, ball two. And you wonder for Tommy mentally, you know, how, how do you handle, all right, first hit of the game. Does that perhaps stop some of his confidence and momentum here? We'll see if the Bobcats take advantage Three, uh, two and one. If there's one guy you don't want to lose confidence when facing, it is A.J. Roush. This guy could make any pitcher in the MAC pay with his extreme power and poise up on the plate. Making his 11th, uh, 12th start of the season. Hit and run is on. Line drive is down into left field. And A.J. Roush has his first hit of this game. Bobcats in business with runners at first and second and one out. Bobcats might be starting to put that Rubik's Cube into place and get yes. a scenario where they could be driving in a couple runs here with Pauly Mancino now up to bat. Pauly Mancino was a double shy of the cycle in game one today. And he takes upstairs, ball one. A lot of great freshmen on both Ohio and Northern Illinois. Polly Mancino is just an emphasis of that. A double shy of the cycle. You don't see that much, let alone out of a freshman. It's been fun to watch. Pick off, and that throw goes into center field. Gideon Antle and A.J. Roush move up on the throwing error. So Ohio has runners at second and third with only one out. Wow, questionable throw. They're trying to pick off a quick Antle. That now puts two runners in scoring position for the Bobcats. Pauly Mancino has gotten off to a bit of a slow start offensively this season, just 176 batting average. But after his three hit game one today, that boosted up. And he is in position to drive in the first runs of this game. 
Meyer delivers, 2-0 is high, 3-0. Tommy Meyer did not allow a hit in the first three innings. He's allowed back-to-back -back singles. Something about Polly Mancino, if he gets that ball into play, he's quick, he can get yes. that first faster than anyone on the team. We've heard from former players, we've heard from coaches. Mancino is a, a, like the flash almost for them. <laughs> he's, he's athletic, there's no doubt. Definitely. Coach, Coach Moore said his athleticism is some of the best we have ever seen. His high school coach actually said that, pardon me, on, on a high school website. He went to St. Ignatius High School as he draws a walk. Coach Ganor said his athleticism is some of the best we have ever seen. And now the bases are loaded with only one out. Tommy Meyer all of a sudden has gone from being in a rhythm, in a groove, to a little bit discombobulated here. Yeah, something I was not expecting. That bunt from Antle must have sparked something in the Bobcats' offenses now. Every guy after him has gotten on base, and now up to bat Alex Finney, who got hit by a pitch in his first pitch in his last at-bat. Yeah, Alex Finney, the catcher, digs in. Finney, a fifth-year student out of Oxford, Michigan. Alex Finney with an opportunity to break the scoreless contest. One ball and no strikes. So that was the first walk a moment ago issued by Tommy Meyer. Remember, that's where he struggled. 15 walks in 10 and two thirds innings. More than a walk per inning. There's the curve ball that's been a strong part of his outing today. Yeah, way to get back into the count after somewhat losing it with Polly Mancino, but getting back in it early to make it 1-1. Outside, two and one. Once again, trying to utilize that breaking ball to slide something in the strike zone. Fastball, burns high. Three balls and one strike. No place to put Alex Finney with only one out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Tommy Meyer was in cruise control through the first three. And now in the fourth, some trouble. 3-1 outside, ball four. It's a bases loaded walk and Ohio has the lead. One to nothing. Back to back walks after not allowing a single one all game. Something Tommy Meyer is certainly not the same pitch, well, it's not the same type of pitch that we've seen early on. This is one inning. However, you're, you're absolutely right. He, he doesn't look like the same guy that was in rhythm as the first three innings. First pitch strike here to Nick Dolan. Still, again, only one run is scored, so there's a chance to escape even more danger. 0-1, Dolan takes upstairs. One ball and one strike. Of course, the double play ball is in everywhere, so Tommy Meyer, despite... Not having his strongest inning might still be able to get out of this with only letting up one run. Which would be a winning scenario for him. Exactly. Given, given how tough of a spot this is. Two balls and a strike. Nick Dolan awaits. Swung on a miss, strike two. Great pitch there from Meyer. Craig Moore just clapped his hands a couple of times, encouraging Dolan, you're, you, you know, you're right on it. Two and two, big pitch coming from Meyer. Three and two. Another scenario where if you're Dolan, do you swing or do you hold on to it? Three, two count. A lot could happen with either a swing or a stand, so we'll see what happens here. A.J. Roush at third, Mancino at second, Finney at first. This one's down the third baseline, fair. Two runs are in, here comes Finney. Nick Dolan cleans the bases up with a three-run double. Nick Dolan saw that pitch a bit inside, 
pulled it right along the third base line, right past the third baseman and getting something very deep in the left field there. Yeah, that was on the inside and Dolan got his hands inside the baseball and was able to pull it down the line. Four nothing lead for Ohio after Nick Dolan's three run double. If you're Meyer right now, you just wanna get this next out to get some momentum on your side. West Lug bounces it to third, this time playable for Aaron Harper. Two down. There we go, a quick at bat there for Meyer to maybe get some energy and just power back on his side. On the flip side for Nick Dolan, what a confidence booster with that three run double. He came into this game just one for six at the plate. Those are his first three RBIs of this season. So you talk about this opportunity with a double header. You've got a guy who doesn't get a ton of playing time this year. He's been battling for that, that spot at third base. These are the types of moments that you have to have if you want to get more and more opportunities. Yeah, definitely showing Coach Moore in the dugout that, hey, I can step up when I need to. 0-1 is up and away. 1-1. One and one. Yeah, when those bases are loaded at a time, you just want to see any ball in play. How about rattling off a huge double to clear the bases? 1-1 one, one is outside. Two balls and one strike. Two down. Ohio leads 4-0. Here in the bottom of the fourth inning, the Bobcats didn't score or record a hit in the first three innings. 2-1 pitch. Popped up foul. Right side, 2-2. Two and two. Billy Adams is up to bat, previously flying out in the eighth. But fun little fact about Adams and his teammate Pauly Mancino, this is not the first time they've suited up for the same squad. They both played at St. Ignatius. Adams was a year older than Mancino, so they played three solid years together there at Ignatius. So that's kind of nice to see both of them kind of a full circle moment Absolutely. in terms of that teammate camaraderie. Yeah, there's a bit of a pipeline from St. Ignatius to Ohio University. Those two not the only former St. Ignatius athletes to come to Ohio. Tyler Finkler was the Defensive Player of the Year for the Bobcats on the 2017 MAC Championship team. And Finkler also went to St. Ignatius High School. Three balls and two strikes. Inside and low, ball four. So the Bobcats have batted around. Cole Williams heads to the plate. Something we really weren't expecting considering how Tommy Maya was playing out this for the first three innings, just being shut down. But seems now the Bobcats have figured something out. Tommy Meyer, he's been working that curveball right over the heart of the plate quite a bit. This time it misses. One ball and no strikes. Looked like it was going to hit Williams for a second there. 1-0 is smashed high in the air and deep to right, but it hangs up at the warning track. J.P. Gauthier makes the catch, and Cole Williams is retired on a loud out number three. But the Bobcats put four runs on the board in the bottom of the fourth inning. It's 4-0 Ohio heading to the top of the fifth inning after this from Bob Wren Stadium.
top of the fifth inning here at Bob Wren Stadium. Ohio leads 4-0 over Northern Illinois. Dylan Masters this time comes out to the mound, and he's pitching with a lead. Yeah. 4 nothing. Definitely gets a little wind underneath those sails with a great inning offensively last time out for the Bobcats. And the confidence is certainly right there as Masters records the strikeout, the drop third strike. Good job by Finney to throw down. And that is out number one. So Ohio getting a massive three-run double from Nick Dolan a moment ago, just his second hit of the season to give Ohio a 4-0 lead after a bases-loaded walk as Dylan Masters fires a fastball on the inside corner for strike one. Kylie, you were down there by the dugout. What's going on there? Yes, honestly, the energy was electric. Not only were his teammates just so happy and just jumping up and down and shouting, but the parents got riled up. Personally, Nick Dolan's parents, they jumped out of their chairs, <laughs> and they were just so excited to see that he was able to catch in three RBIs. This is such a big thing for him today. Yeah, it really is because he hasn't gotten a lot of playing time this year, mm -hmm. and you can imagine the excitement getting the opportunity and so you were sitting like right by the dugout there? Yep, I was yeah. right by the dugout. I was able to hear all the shouting, all the yelling, and I was sitting right by his parents too. So just to be able to see that, just to feel the energy was super like cool to be a part of. That's awesome. Great stuff down there. We'll see if the energy continues from the Ohio Bobcats. This is a bloop single from Eric Arado. Thanks so much for that insight, Kylie. Thank you so much. Yeah. Man, you know, it gives you a good feel of just like being right there, right on the, the dugout step and how energized the team and the fans were when Nick Dolan had that three-run double, a guy who, you know, he started 40-plus games last year and now in a situation where there's some competition for third base and this was his opportunity today. And still is, and he's yeah. taking advantage of it. I mean, these are the moments in baseball people tune in to watch that crazy double to break open this lead, and especially from a player who has not been seeing the playing time he might have expected coming into the year, just producing in the opportunities you get. That's what we love to see. One down, top of the fifth. Arado reaches on that. Bloop single a moment ago. So here's Andre Demetral, the shortstop. Yeah, that was Arado's second single of the game after an infield and the infield single, the first uh, inning there. A little bit of talking from, uh, from Catcher Alex Finney just telling Masters, hey, it's a 3-0 count. Let's get something in the strike zone. Just get him hitting. Maybe draw some contact, but not too much contact. Three balls and no strikes. And there's a strike on the outside corner. What a fireball right down the middle it looked like there. Three one is on the outside corner, three and two. So as we've outlined, this is the first start of the season for Dylan Masters. And so far, some, some tricky spots in this outing. You know, there were two runners on in the second inning, got out of that jam. Two more runners on in the fourth inning, got out of that jam. And he also has six strikeouts in this game. He came into this game with seven total strikeouts in his first three appearances. Yeah, it doesn't matter how you start the inning, it matters how you finish. And here's a pop-up. Billy Adams makes the play, two down. Dylan Masters, there's a great article online written by Bobby Keegan of The Post, and it outlines how Dylan Masters, well, the article is titled, don't doubt Dylan Masters. Ooh. So, you know, he's from New Albany, Ohio, and had to overcome an uphill battle, uh, an uphill mental battle with an injury that kept him from exploring his full potential in high school. 
Uh, but he has found his true home here at Ohio University after transferring from Murray State. And Masters says in the article, my junior year of high school, I was only throwing 72 miles an hour and wow. took a big jump as his velocity two years later went from 72 to 90 miles an hour. He, he could right not – yeah, it, it's quite remarkable. Yeah. He, He's come a long way, and Dylan did not play his senior year of high school due to his ACL injury, which he didn't hurt during baseball season. He actually got hurt during basketball season when he tore his ACL. Two balls and two strikes to Colin Summerhill, who remains hitless today. That's crazy. You never really hear about those stories from anyone. You just see guys transfer from Murray State. Pop up down the right field line, foul. Yeah, you, you sometimes just yeah, see. Yeah, you just see the stories, you see the quick blurbs, but it's very nice to see a guy like Bobby Keegan from the Post, who I know really well, shout out Bobby Keegan, like illustrate these amazing stories told by guys like Dylan Masters, who's coming out here and having himself a great outing. Yes, he is. He's gotten better, it feels like, as this game has gone on. Aging like fine wine here. <laughs> Two balls and two strikes. The 2-2 two -two is down and in, ball three. And one of, the, one of the biggest parts to Masters' game, that breaking ball, he throws a, the junk downstairs here, ball four. So runners at first and second with two down. One big part of Dylan's journey between high school and leading up to Murray State and then Ohio, he actually went to Inspiration Academy in mm. Florida, took a prep year, and got better and ultimately landed him a spot at Murray State. Oh, something about that walk, too. I think it's just his uh, first. For, yeah, it's his first walk of the game. I'm looking at my scorecard here. So yeah. Kind of seeing a little bit of, not similarities to Tommy Meyer, but... Both of them letting up their first walks very late into this contest for them. This is the first time we've seen Tim Brown, pitching coach for the Bobcats, make his way out to the mound to have to chat with Dylan Masters. I bet with this lead, he's not looking to pull them quite yet. He's looking to see how far Masters can go. Probably just telling him, hey, let's keep these guys at second and first. No advance runners. We got two outs here. Let's end this inning on a high note and get out of here and maybe get some bullpen help later on down the line. Especially when he got such a dynamic hitter like Mason Kelly up to bat for the Huskies. Masters is definitely gonna look to shut him down after Kelly reached third on his last time after he hit a nice single and got a few bases out of that. Indeed, got to advance all the way. 90 feet, but could not score. Two balls and no strikes. Dylan Masters looking to dial it back in here with runners at first and second. There's a strike two and one. And just to close on that article written by Bobby Keegan of The Post, Dylan was quoted in that article saying, nobody has ever taken a chance on me like Ohio took a chance on me when I committed July 1st, 2022. 3-1 pulled foul, so it's safe to say he's found himself a home away yeah. from home. I feel like this game has been a lot about chances and guys with this doubleheader t getting chances to show why they deserve more playing time, like Alex Finney. No, not Alex Finney. Uh, who was that at the double? Uh, Nick, Nick Dolan, Dolan, who hit the double in such short appearances. Here's Nick Dolan defensively, comes up, throws a bullet to first in time. Look at that. Smug, perfect timing right there. Wow, a defensive gem over at third base from Nick Dolan. And that ends the top half of the fifth inning. We go to the bottom of the fifth next. Ohio leads 4-0 right here from Bob Wren Stadium.
Bottom of the fifth inning we go. J.R. Nelson, Gideon Antle, A.J. Roush. The heartbeat of the order for the Bobcats to take on the new pitcher for NIU, Matt Salmonson. Makes his fifth appearance of the season out of the pen. First pitch swinging. J.R. Nelson to short Demetral. No chance. J.R. Nelson reaches on an infield single. J.R. Nelson, that's his first hit of the game after flying out in back-to-back -back appearances. And Gideon Antle stands in for the Bobcats. A bunt single his last time up. He has the ability to do that and also leave the yard. Homered back in game one earlier today. And that one skips it well outside. One ball, no strikes. Yeah, when you think about it, that bunt that Antle had was not only the first hit of the game for the Bobcats, but it, it broke open that four-run inning for the Bobcats. It get, got a guy on base, got Meyer a bit flustered, and resulted in a plethora of Bobcats rounding the bases. Yeah, sometimes it just takes the smallest thing to knock you off your rocker, and, and the bunt single was exactly that. Yeah, literal sense, the smallest thing that could have happened. <laughs> One one. There goes J.R. Nelson. Double pump from the catcher, and the throw is well late. Cooper Cone had no chance, and J.R. Nelson has his fourth stolen base of the season. Yeah, that slight hesitation from Cone could have been the difference between getting him out right at second and letting him uh, take that base for free almost. Two one is outside, three and one. So Tommy Meyer started off flawless. He, he didn't allow a hit in the first three innings, only one base runner, and recorded five strikeouts. But then everything turned upside down in the fourth, and his day is done. Here's the three one, and Antle hammers this one straight up in the air down the left field line. Long run for Demetral and Eric Arado. It's Arado, the left fielder, who makes the catch. For out number one. Yeah, just a bit under that ball. Maybe if he was a bit more level with the ball, it could have looked like it had some pop coming off the bat. So that's just the presence Antle brings. A guy who every hit he hits, you think you, you're just on home run watch almost. You wonder, is this the one that's going yeah. out? And he's got that type of brilliance over there. Yeah, that power on... In the righty batter's box as Roush bounces this to short deep in the hole. Demetral makes a terrific throw across the diamond. Two down. Great as Solomon to, after somewhat battling with Antle there, getting a quick out there with uh, A.J. Roush, the four hitter, who doesn't go down as easy as that usually. Pauly Mancino. Right fielder. 0 for 1 with a walk and a run scored for the freshman from the Columbus area. Came into today hitting just 176, but had a three hit game in game one. And this is a guy has, who has so much potential for Craig Moore's team. 1 0 pitch outside, 2 0. I asked Coach Moore about Pauly, and Craig said he has been barreling up just about everything during the preseason, also probably one of our most athletic players. We said earlier his high school, high school coach said he was one of the most athletic players to come through St. Ignatius High, and he's got so many different skill sets, right? He can hit the ball to all sides of the field. He had an opposite field home run in game one, but he also has a terrific arm in the outfield. Two balls and two strikes. So really as a freshman to, to be able to have all those tools and to then know that, all right, I got four years ahead of me to build on those tools. Sky's the limit for this young man. Yeah, Coach Moore relying a lot on that youth that Ohio possessed. How about that? Mason Ooh. Kelly climbs the ladder and snatches that extra base hit away from Paulie Mancino. Probably saved a run there too. Yeah, it definitely did. So we are done with five innings. Ohio leads 4-0 over Northern Illinois in game two 
of our doubleheader today. We'll be back in a moment from Bob Wren Stadium. Top of the sixth inning here at Bob Wren Stadium. Back with Quinn Elfers, Sam Hyman, and our field reporter, Kylie Osco. Thanks for being with us today on an overcast Friday afternoon in Athens, Ohio. Bobcats lead 4-0. Cooper Cohn at the plate. New pitcher is Tyler Peck. And the first pitch is in there for a strike. Peck is a junior from Oak Creek, Wisconsin. 6'2", 215 pounds. Makes his fourth appearance of the season with a 9-0-0 ERA. Four strikeouts, six walks, and six innings. Yeah, Tyler Peck just trying to find some stability in his outings. Against Campbell, his two outings ago, he didn't even make an out. He let up three earned runs, three walks, and no strikeouts, but somewhat rebounded a bit with uh, only a two-run affair at UIC. So Tyler Peck just looking to find some no, lower numbers in terms of runs allowed there. Yeah, and going back to that game you, you referenced against Campbell where he was unable to get an out. Campbell, to be fair, they are one of the best mid-major teams in college baseball. The Camels always find themselves at the top of the Big South Conference. So just like Northern Illinois, they had a challenging schedule playing the likes of LSU, Abilene Christian. 3-2 is called strike three. Cooper Cohn looked like a deer in headlights there. He couldn't believe he, he was called back to the dugout. We've seen a pattern of NIU guys thinking those final pitches are balls trying to get to first base, but the ump has stopped them in their tracks multiple times. She gets the fans roaring at Bob Wren Stadium here. J.P. Gauthier, the right fielder, steps to the plate. Gauthier, a quiet return to the starting lineup. His debut earlier today in game one went 0 for 5 with a walk. He is 0 for 2 in this game. Yeah, you were tell, tell me, telling us earlier that Gauthier had a little bit of injury problems early on in the season, suffered something in the preseason, so it might take a little bit longer than some might hope for Gauthier to get back to that peak uh, form in his game. Yeah, the potential's still there as he scorches this one foul down the right field line. Yeah, that one had potential exit velocity power if it stayed fair, so 
can never count out a guy who's just coming off of an injury. Yeah, and Coach Copeland said, you know, JP looks like a pro. He he shows up to work every day with a really positive mindset. He's got all the tools in the world and can certainly play right field just as much as he can center field. Moved over to right field this season, and he cranks this one in the left field. Playable, A.J. Roush, two down. He was on top of that ball. It just was the worst possible placement right into the glove of Roush. But... If you're Northern Illinois, I feel like it's a good problem to have that you have two guys that can play center field so well and you have to move one of them over to right field. It's definitely a problem some other squads are definitely looking to run into as the season progresses. Two down for Aaron Harper. Strike one. And on the other side for Ohio, they are also very versatile in the outfield. A.J. Roush has played right field and center field in his career. He's playing in left field this season. And then Gideon Antle, he's played pretty much every position, center, right, and left. So that versatility is something Craig Moore is very happy about. 0-2, outside. Yeah, the thing about that, we're still such in an early stage of the season, even though it feels like we've been in baseball for longer. Like, we're still right. just getting into conference play. So both teams definitely looking to find out which pieces fit where in this puzzle in order to – Get the yeah. best outcome as the conference tournament comes along, which still weighs away, but never too early to find out what clicks. Yeah, and sometimes it's not the easiest puzzle. I know from literal puzzles, it takes, <laughs> it takes some time. It takes, it, takes, it takes some time to put it all together. One, two, just misses outside. Two balls and two strikes. Yeah, especially with a ton of younger guys coming in, like Polly Mancino now getting thrown into that outfield rotation you wonder is there going to be any more changes coming with maybe moving Mancino to left or even center line drive belted into center field a two out single how about Aaron Harper he is three for three with three singles and this is a guy that went 0 for 6 in game one today and has struggled this season Harper came into this game hitting just 182 wow and he has three singles here in game two after going hitless earlier today. You say three singles. How about three two-out singles? <laughs> yeah. All of those singles coming at crucial times for the Huskies. Swung on and missed strike one, Charlie Parcell. Four-nothing lead for the Bobcats here in the top of the sixth inning. Ohio is getting out hit in this game seven to four, wow. but has a four-nothing lead. It doesn't matter about the quality. It matters about the, the – not the quantity – and that is about the quality of the hit. Plus you got to take and the into, timeliness of it. Yeah, take into account, too, a few walks from uh, Tommy Meyer in that fourth inning of disaster for the Huskies. 0-2, oh, jam shot, blooped behind the first base bag. Billy Adams is there to retire the side. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning after this. Ohio leads 4-0 over Northern Illinois. Game two of our doubleheader continues next on Ohio Bobcat TV.
Alex Finney leads off of the Bobcats as we welcome you back to Bob Wren Stadium, Ohio and Northern Illinois. Game two of our doubleheader today with Quinn Elfers, Sam Hyman, Kylie Osco roaming the field, around the field. 4-0 lead for the Bobcats. New pitcher is Connor Lutz, who is just making Quinn, we talked about this just a moment ago, he's only appearing for the second time this season. He's yet to pitch a full inning so far this season. Alex Finney's drag bunt trickles foul. Ooh, just a bit too much pull on that ball as it slowly trickled out of the range of play. But I wonder the decision-making behind taking out Solomonson, who didn't have the worst inning, maybe trying to keep the Bobcats on their toes with a new, with a new arm in the mound. Yeah, just get maybe some different opportunities out there for the, the bullpen. Coach Copeland did say that he's looking to see a lot more consistency from his bullpen who, you know, they've struggled this year. And Connor Lutz, or Lutz, I should say, making just his second appearance as we talked about, point two thirds of an inning, only two thirds of an inning. And that was against LSU, who's oh, wow. a top five team. Crazy day to make your debut. Yeah, season debut. Throwing them into the uh, wolves or the tigers, I yes. must say. The jungle. The jungle. The jungle. Jungle down in Baton Rouge. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Swung on a miss, strike three. Wow, great way to kick off the inning if you're uh, Connor Lutz or Lutz there. Yeah, good for Lutz to come in, set the tone there. That's big confidence. For sure, especially not seeing much time on the field. That's a way to build consistency. Just get those reps, get those strikeouts, get those hits. Whatever, as long as you're doing it on the field, showing coach I can handle this situation. That's what they want to see. Nick Dolan at the plate. Last time up, he had the bases clearing double. He also made a terrific play at third base defensively. Yeah, Nick Dolan has been showing off that veteran status with Coming up huge, both on offense and defense. Pulls this foul, 0-2. Got to be on, got to be on alert there if you're that third baseman, making sure it doesn't go by you again for a bases clearing double. O2 is check swing foul right side. You're right off the bat. Lutz showing great control, it seems. Already 0-2 in the count for Nick Dolan. Dolan takes high, one ball and two strikes. Great eye there by Dolan, already down 0-2 in the count. Just knowing that the pressure's on, one bad look and you're out. So great eye and patience there by Nick Dolan waiting for his pitch. 1-2 is outside, two balls and two strikes. So as the Bobcats gear up to get Mac play rolling, just like NIU this weekend, Ohio on the outset projected fifth in the Mac preseason poll. Kent State one, Ball State two. Coach Moore told us before the season Look, we are motivated to show people that we can play this game at a high level. Last year, Ohio did not make the MAC tournament and didn't have a guy on an all-conference list, first or second team. Grounded a short. Demetrol makes the play for out number two. So you imagine those two things and how much this, this squad is motivated to prove to the Mac that, hey, look, we're, we're competitive. We can compete. And I think that's sort of what the mindset is this season. Yeah, if you want to prove you're the best, how about you beat the best as Ohio will take on, will host Kent State all next weekend for what will be a, a sure to be outstanding couple of games there. Very important. But it also is very important that Ohio responds here in this game Right now, with the 4 nothing lead against Northern Illinois, who has shown up from DeKalb 
One ball and one strike to Wes Lug. So the other thing for the Bobcats that they've struggled with this season is starting slow. And earlier today, they got down again. So six of their seven losses, they've not scored first. They score first in this, this game, setting the tone. They did not just score first. They scored in bunches first. Four <laughs> yes. runs in one inning. 2-1 is golfed into shallow center field. Long run, and it drops in front of Charlie Parcell. A base hit. Wes Lugg's first hit of the game. Yeah, you said golfed out there. It looked like a pitching, uh, a pitching wedge just was hit perfectly in between four uh, Husky, Husky outfielders, Husky fielders in general. There was an invisible flag. Yeah, couldn't have. Couldn't and, have. and yeah, West Lug hit the flag and maybe eagled. Yeah, couldn't have thrown it better out there. Couldn't have thrown it any better out there. Billy Adams at the plate for the Bobcats. First pitch, right down Court Street, strike one. That's a great hit there by Lug, who's kind of been struggling so far up to this season. Has not, doesn't even have a 100 average so far, point one average. So definitely a great momentum changer for Lug, who's also not only struggling offensively, but has also had to deal with moving from catcher to first base, usually dealing with guys behind the mound now has to worry about fielding missiles that are being thrown by the likes of Nick Dolan and uh, JR. Yeah. Yeah, JR Nelson. Yeah, JR Nelson. Bounces back to the net and West Lug advances to second on the wild pitch. Ohio, the last couple of seasons, we talked about just a moment ago how they were picked fifth in the MAC preseason poll this year. Since 2017, not counting the COVID year, last time Ohio won the MAC championship, 2017. So since 2017, Ohio has had three winning seasons, three losing seasons. So there's been some ups, there's been some downs, and they're just looking to get back into a situation where it becomes a winning season, a chance to compete in the MAC tournament. It all starts with the MAC play this weekend. 2-2, Two -two, waved at and missed, strike three. Billy Adams is retired. Bobcats still lead, though, 4 nothing. heading to the top of the seventh right after this. Top of the seventh inning, Tyler Peck remains on the mound for the Bobcats. And a first pitch breaking ball is high, 1-0. Jake Nelson is 0 for 2 in this game. 1-0 is low, two balls and no strikes. Ohio is looking to bounce back after an 8-6 loss. Earlier today in 11 innings, 
Nelson smacks it on the ground to J.R. Nelson, no relation, and shows off the arm. Ooh. He just absolutely can make every play over at short. Yeah, J.R. Nelson channeling that inner Derek Jeter from the grabbing from crossbody to that throw, what looked could have been a football type throw, just perfect accuracy, perfect power to get the careening Nelson out at first. Coach Moore has marveled over how terrific J.R. Nelson is at shortstop, saying he can range from his left to his right. He can change his arm angle when he needs to. Can make all the plays over at short. Eric Arado back at the top of the order for the Huskies. Arado is two for three in this game with a pair of singles. Yeah, you talk about that high praise Coach Moore had for Nelson. He's only a freshman. This guy has three more years to develop, whether he stays at Ohio or not, and become one of the, like, one of the greats, hopefully one day, for the Bobcats. Already showing great promise, him and Mancino. Seeing a lot of reps and seeing a lot of starting uh, appearances for the Bobcats. Definitely a youth movement in the works for the Bobcats. Yeah, those two guys have started at least 10 of the 11 games this season. J.R. Nelson started every game. Paulie Mancino started 10 of the 11 games this season. And yeah, Coach Moore going into the season, it wasn't like there was any sort of competition for them. Like, they both won the job pretty pretty handily. Like, they, they earned it. And it's just great to see with how the future of this program could be down the line if those two guys continue to get better and better. Andy Demetral at the plate for NIU. This entire Bobcats team still has, is considerably young. Only Gideon Antle is the only consistent starter who's a senior. You have guys like Finney who are thrown in there occasionally, but yeah, a lot of, you got, you got Roush, who's a junior, who's a redshirt junior. Uh, you got that, Cole that blooper just went off the pitcher's mitt. Tyler Peck goes to Adams, and Adams makes the play. So it was a ground ball that was turned turned from a, a line, a little blooper to then a ground ball fielded by Adams for the out. Very weird play. Eric Arado moves to second with two down. You can put that down on your score sheet one four three because it did. Hit off of Tyler Peck's mitt. He tipped it. Colin Summerhill bounces this to short. J.R. Nelson deep in the hole. Why not? He makes another play. Outstanding field work this inning from J.R. Nelson. One of the best infielders in the MAC. And this guy's only a freshman. Fun to watch. Bottom of the seventh inning is next from Bob Wren Stadium. Yeah, he's making all these incredible plays. Yeah.
New pitcher on the mound for Northern Illinois, R.J. Nowicki, the redshirt junior from Hoffman Estates, Illinois. Back with Quinn Elfers, Sam Hyman, and Kylie Osco, our field reporter. Top of the order for the Bobcats, starting with Cole Williams, 0 for 3 in this game. So R.J. Nowicki is making his first appearance of the season. He did not pitch last year. Williams smashes this into right field. J.P. Gauthier is there, one up and one down. Yeah, with a guy making his debut this year, you have no idea what to expect. This guy has not pitched since 2022. So you really are going in blind here if you're the Bobcat hitters. But right off the bat, you see Cole Williams taking a fastball right to the glove of J.P. Gauthier. This is just a matchup appearance it looks like for Nowicki. He faces the lefty Cole Williams and will be removed from this game with a couple of righties due up. So we'll step, step aside very briefly for this pitching change. Call to the bullpen with one down in the bottom of the seventh inning. Ohio leads 4 nothing despite getting out hit so far in this game 7-5. to five. We'll be back in a moment from Bob Wren Stadium. Welcome back to Bob Wren Stadium with Quinn Elfers, Sam Hyman, and Kylie Osco, our field reporter. Thanks for being here as we are about to start the bottom of the seventh, or at least continue the bottom of the seventh. Quick pitching change. J.R. Nelson swings through and misses for strike one. The new pitcher is Sam Peterson, number six, who replaces R.J. Nowicki. R.J. Nowicki only faced one batter, so it was just for a left-on-left -left matchup. And then quickly a transition to NIU's fifth pitcher of the game. Yeah, you look at Sam Peterson right off the bat. His ERA is at 8.1 and only three and in, three in the thirds innings pitched, giving up four runs in just a short amount of time, five walks as well, but also four strikeouts. So somewhat of a wild card here for Sam, for the... Northern Illinois Huskies as they look to just find some sort of consistency in the bullpen. Yeah, Sam Peterson transferred from McHenry, uh, McHenry County College, a junior college, has which a, is located in Crystal Lake, Illinois. Has a bit of that Craig Kimbrell type sidearm throw, kind of putting batters on their toes. Yeah, Craig Kimbrell, he kind of does that shoulder hang yeah. Like a uh, um, kind of just hangs his arms up. Yeah, just up. very intimidating look. Not quite that for Sam Peterson. But the delivery, eerily similar to the major league reliever. One two pitch, reached at and poked into shallow right center field. Jake Nelson makes the catch. 
two down. Here comes Gideon Antle, one for three in this game. Hit a three-run homer in game one today. Yeah, Gideon Antle looking, despite having a run, and he, uh, knowing him, he is not satisfied with just a single on the day. Fouls that one back. Speaking to Craig Moore, Gideon Antle is always in the batting cages before practice, after practice. He just wants it. He's super competitive. 0-2. I asked Coach Moore about the process in recruiting Gideon, who transferred from Jefferson College. This is his second year at Ohio, and Coach Moore said, that assistant coach Kirby McGuire saw Gideon at a junior college showcase in Westfield, Indiana. This pitch is crushed in the air, left center field, but stays up. And Eric Arado makes the catch to retire the side. So one, two, three inning for Sam Peterson. Out of the bullpen, along with RJ Nowicki, who faced the first batter of this frame. We go to the top of the eighth right after this. Four nothing, Bobcats in front. Tyler Peck stays out there for the Bobcats. Working his third inning out of the bullpen. 4-0 lead for Ohio. Mason Kelly leads off for Northern Illinois. NIU has out hit Ohio in this game, but the Bobcats have made them count. NIU has stranded eight runners in this game on the base pass. Yeah, rather quiet game for both offenses after compiling an offensive showcase last game, putting up a total of 14 runs in total, eight to six affair, but. Yeah, much different story in this game. It's become a pitcher's duel with great outings from the starters early on, followed by outstanding work keeping the hitters at bay from, elite, from the bullpens. An outstanding start. Dylan Masters, five shutout innings, six strikeouts, one walk, six hits, through 90 pitches. Very impressive work for the Southpaw. Kelly crushes it into left center field and double trouble. Mason Kelly scurries into second base with a leadoff double here in the top of the eighth inning. Ohio trying to hang on and win this game. If they complete the shutout, it would be the first shutout victory of the season. By Mason Kelly and the Huskies with other ideas as Cooper Cohen steps in. He's 0 for 3 in this game. Fly ball down the right field line and out of play. Owen won the count, and this pitch is lifted into right field. Pauly Mancino makes the catch, and Kelly tags. 
And is over at third base safely. Putting a runner in scoring position with J.P. Gautier up to bat is not what you want to look for if you are Tyler Peck, who is kind of getting up in the uh, innings to where he normally pitches. Uh, he's usually a three-inning pitcher type of guy, already at two and a third. So hopefully that arm keeps you alive for a few more outs. Gautier grounds it towards third, deep in the hole. Nick Dolan across the diamond in time. Ohio trades a run for an out there. Mason Kelly scores. The shutout is extinguished. It's an RBI ground out for J.P. Gautier. Tyler Peck, yes, you, you, you alluded to what he's done this season. Two of his three appearances coming into today have been... Three innings out of the pen. Long run here, Paulie Mancino out of play and into the bullpen. That cap coming off. Mancino looked determined to get that ball. Yeah. If it was a few more feet in play, he would have gotten it for sure. Yeah, you talk about the hit battle. Another, like, another hit to tally on to Northern Illinois. Eight hits so far in the game, only resulting in one run, though. Meanwhile, the Bobcats have five hits on the day, resulting in four. It just shows, once again, I said before, not the quantity, but the quality and when it comes. 0-2 is down and in, ball one. Tried to put a little bit of a uh, slider looking like on that pitch. One-two from Peck. Bounced on the ground, J.R. Nelson. He's been automatic at short today, and that continues. Fancy glove work from J.R. Nelson, and that retires the side. So we head to the bottom of the eighth inning, the Bobcats, with a 4-1 lead over Northern Illinois. Game two of our doubleheader today from Bob Wren Stadium. Bottom of the eighth is next. Bottom of the eighth inning here at Bob Wren Stadium alongside Quinn Elfers, Sam Hyman, and Kylie Osco, our field reporter. 4-1 lead for Ohio. A.J. Roush at the plate. Ohio looking for some insurance against Sam Peterson, and this is bounced foul, third base side. Yeah, you spoke it perfect. You stuck the words right out of my mouth, just looking to tally on some insurance here. Don't have to worry about a potential comeback from Northern Illinois, but Ohio has been on the other end of a huge comeback. 
putting up 10 runs in <laughs> a single inning when they were down 10 against Youngstown State. So comebacks are nothing new here in Bob Red. Yeah, never, never count out anyone during a midweek game. You never know what's going to happen during a midweek game with all the pitchers that are lined up to have opportunities. Two balls and two strikes to A.J. Roush. Redshirt junior from Powell, Ohio out of Olentangy Liberty High School. Coached by Ty Brenning. A.J. bounces this one behind the second base bag. There was a shift on, and the second baseman, Jake Nelson, makes the play to retire A.J. Roush. Yeah, looked for a second like it might have got through, but the second baseman, Jake Nelson, was on that ball. Way over there. Yeah, he was on that. That shift was called perfectly, knowing uh, A.J. Roush being a pole hitter that he is. So great, great adjustment there from Northern Illinois to get the, uh, to get the out there. Here's Paulie Mancino. A freshman from Westlake, Ohio, out of St. Ignatius High School. Trills that one foul towards the Ohio softball field. Ohio softball is in action right now against Coastal Carolina down in Conway, South Carolina. The Bobcats will play their home opener on Tuesday at 4 o'clock. Yeah, we were talking, I was talking to Coach Moore a few days ago about just the delay in the home openers for both teams since we are in a place that gets that gets really cold in February. So Coach Moore was just it's, he's just he's just happy that the players get to be in their dorms, be home, be just in a place that's familiar to them. Mancino cranks this into right field, but playable for JP Gauthier, two down. And it's not have to worry about traveling or anything as. Northern Illinois has had two, especially coming into a double header. You can only imagine how drained, just men, maybe not mental, maybe not drained, but how it affects the mentality and the physicality of the Huskies of Northern Illinois. Sidearm delivery there from Sam Peterson. Strike one. Two down here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Ohio clinging to a 4-1 lead thanks to a bases loaded walk and Nick Dolan's three run double. Alex Finney struck out his last time up looking for a bit of revenge. Finney swings and misses for strike three and that retires the side. So, last chance for the Huskies. Down four to one, heading into the top of the ninth inning. Eight, nine, and one hitters due up. Come back and join us for the top of the ninth next from Bob Wren Stadium.
J.R. Nelson has had himself a day. Some terrific plays defensively over at shortstop. His arm angle can change depending upon where the ball is hit to be able to make different types of plays. He's been fun to watch today as Charlie Parcell whacks this into shallow right center field. That plops in just what the doctor ordered for the Huskies, a leadoff single in the top of the ninth, down 4-1. to one. Backs against the wall. Need any sort of guy on base you can get. Charlie Purcell not wasting any time getting a nice uh, single in a territory where no Bobcats were located. Tyler Peck on the mound for his fourth inning of work. He only threw four innings. One time last year, he's only thrown four complete innings once in his entire college career. And in this game, three frames, one run allowed. First pitch is in there for a strike to Jake Nelson. Yeah, keeping that intensity up, keeping just that mentality of let me finish this. I don't want the offense to come out one more time. Just get this game wrapped up for Tyler Peck. 0-2 on Jake Nelson, who's 0 for 3 in this game. O2 oh, is low, one ball and two strikes. These two teams will play the series finale either tomorrow or Sunday. It's very likely if you're paying close attention to the weather that we will not play tomorrow. We'll likely play the series finale on Sunday. The weather forecast tomorrow, 90% chance of rain pretty much the entire day. Sunday, no rain in the forecast, even though it'll be chilly with a high of 41 and a low of 32. Yeah. 2-2, two, two, swung on and missed, strike three, one down. Tyler Peck fin finessing that count there, was never behind, always stayed in front with that great fastball, followed with some few uh, breaking balls here and there to keep Jake Nelson on his toes. For his first strikeout of the day. Yeah, in three and a third innings for Tyler Peck. Craig Moore has been searching for consistency out of the bullpen. That's really what was one of the reasons why Dylan Masters started the season out of the bullpen. He's a guy that is capable of starting, but with some of the inconsistencies out of the pen, that's why he started out of the bullpen this year. A.J. Roush tracks that one down in the left field corner. How and Ohio's down, Ohio's one out away from bouncing back and taking game two. Yeah, like a hawk, Roush was on that ball as it was soaring near to uh, far, near to the foul pole at left field. And if the Bobcats were to end this game allowing only one run, it would be the fewest runs allowed all season for the Bobcats. In a game. In a, yeah, in a game. Last chance for NIU, Andre Demetral. 0-1 the count. Dylan Masters started this game five shutout innings. Tyler Peck, three and two-thirds with only one run. Here's a line drive into shallow right field. Paulie Mancino dives and makes the catch. Uh, putting an exclamation point on this outstanding showing from the Bobcats. Game over. Paulie Mancino. 4-1 victory for Ohio as the Bobcats bounce back after losing in 11 innings in game one and take game two four to one here today. Wow, just an outstanding showing from both Dylan Masters and Tyler Peck, keeping the Huskies at bay despite coming into this game after recently letting up like a few runs late in the uh, affair uh, last contest. So love to see that if you coach Craig Moore, hoping for the same result, if not, a similar tomorrow. Game three will either be tomorrow or Sunday, so stay tuned for that. For our outstanding crew today, our field reporter Kylie Osco and my broadcast partner Quinn Elfers, Sam Hyman saying so long from Bob Wren Stadium. Thanks for watching. Ohio wins. Ohio wins by a final of four to one in game two over Northern Illinois. Have a great rest of your Friday evening.